All right. So let me ask you guys a question. Um, how do you guys define yourselves? Is that, a, is that a out there question? What do I mean to find? I'm glad you said that, right? <laughs> Right, point, point of perception. Meaning that you guys can't see yourselves like I see you, right? Because this is my point of perception. Now, how I perceive myself when I wake up in the morning, who I say I am is who I define myself as. Who you define yourself as is who you present to the world, right? Any gang members in here? No, you're not gonna be Thank you. Thank you. I know there's more than one. I know there's more than one. Well, listen, Keep you might say, you, I'm, not, no, I'm, I'm showing you something. Anybody ever, anybody ever heard of oh, the laws of attraction? And feel That's free to ask me a question anytime you feel like it. You interrupt me and ask me a question about anything. Laws of attraction. I'm getting to something. I know I'm, I'm bouncing around, but I'm getting to something, right? Laws of attraction say that what you speak to the universe is what you'll get. Like, I can look at you and see you as my young brother and say, yo, I love you. I couldn't do that before, because as soon as I saw you, I looked at you as a threat. That's what animals do. When two animals look at each other, they go, what you looking at? They start biting each other. We're civilized, we're men, we're, we're human beings. So when I see you, I greet you because I love you. You're another reflection of God like I am. We gotta start learning the power of love as opposed to the power of hate. When police come around, they go, yo, Enf, then my nickname is Enf. They go, yo, Enf, man, I'm, they nervous. I'm like, I'm not nervous. They say, why? I like, because I'm not a criminal. I don't define myself as a criminal. And when police officers see me, they don't define me as a criminal. Because my pants ain't below my butt. When I, when, well, yeah, when, the way you carry yourself. Right now, let's not get it twisted. No one has the right to violate your human rights. So you can dress any way you want to, look any way you want to. It doesn't give a cop a right to shoot you in the street, beat you down, nothing like that. But it would be smart and wise in these days and times to carry yourself a certain way. Because there's already a, there's already a, 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 there's already a stigma over us. You know what I mean? And it's not even about black, uh, Latino. Just being young, you're a part of hip hop culture. You like hip hop, right? You're wearing a Montclair, right? So you're a part of that culture. I can see it when I look at you. I don't look at you and say, oh, I see a white kid. I see a hip hop kid. I say all that to say, change how you define yourself. Change how you define yourself. I don't see a gang member when I see you, sis. I see a young black queen. And if you walk and carry yourself as such, that's the kind of energy you'll attract. And when did gangster become something where you disrespect our women, where we disrespect ourselves? See, we can't ask people to love us. We can't ask people to love us and treat us right. And we don't love and treat ourselves right. The first thing, the first, it starts with dignity, having some self-respect. And you don't respect yourself if your pants are hanging down below your butt or if a young lady walks by and you have something slick to say to her and that young lady could be your mother, your daughter, your sister, your girl, mm -hmm. how would you feel? How would you feel if, if wifey came home and said, listen, the dudes on the corner, they touched my butt. You're gonna lose your mind, right? And the same thing with women. You have to have some class about yourself. So it's what you respond to. You know, your mom, excuse my language, your mom, you got a fatty mom. Thank you, you just, you, just, you just degraded yourself. You just degraded yourself and you might have another dude that's standing around. I've, I've had plenty of times where I looked at a woman and said, dad, I'd like to speak to her. But she just responded to that. I don't talk like that. I had plenty of times where I said, hey, peace queen, how you doing, sister? I ain't no queen, what you talking about? If I was a queen, I'd be rich. Just missed the whole thing. Yeah. And I think the overall message that I'm here to tell y'all is it starts with you. It starts with you getting up and saying you wanna change. How many people in here wanna change? Really change. Do you know what it takes? I got a concept called, well, a lot of people say it. KISS. You know what KISS stands for? Keep it simple, stupid. You don't got to be that complicated. I can, I can tell you a whole bunch of stuff that's relevant to me and, and Mr. Pratt, but it won't be relevant to you guys. So I like to speak to what's relevant to people. Discipline. Self-discipline. I staying on my friend's couch. I sold 33 books in a blizzard. And that's when God said to me that there's no turning back. 
Because if I can stand outside all night and sell illegal narcotics, then I can stand outside and sell my book, right? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> the will to do what's right when nobody else is around. See, it's cool when Mr. Pratt is here, this sister is here, staff is around, but what do you do when you're by yourself? <laughs> Are y'all in a drug program? Y'all get y'all, yeah. they take, they check y'all urine? Yeah. They, check, they check your urine? Mm -hmm. They check your urine? Yeah. Okay, well, you know, um, weed, right? Everybody have weed problems. A little bit of alcohol, mollies. Weed, <laughs> eat, <laughs> eat, eat, pills, perks, oxycontin, oxycontin. All right, you know that the addiction stat is like heroin, right? Mm -hmm. I've dealt with that addiction from, from, my, from being in the hospital, having home surgeries. I, I got addicted to those for a while. It's not a game. You don't want to keep on doing that to yourself. Just a quick note to you, your tolerance, and, and then Percocets have been coming like a cool drug. Like people who smoke weed don't mind playing with Percs, don't mind playing with Zannies. Percocets is synthetic heroin. You know, it's, you know what heroin does to you, right? You go through chill. When, when you try to withdraw from it, you go through chills, your bones start to hurt, you end up getting diarrhea, you can't eat anything, so it, it's, it's, it's terrible. Your body becomes dependent on it, and if you quit it for five years and you had a five pill a day habit and you quit for five years, when you go back to it, you need five pills a day. There's no starting back with that first high. So it's just that's just a, just a word that. Yes, yeah. So that's just yeah. That's just that's just. I was a, doing like 10, 15. 10, 15 pills a day. Yeah, that's bad. That's bad. That's bad. That's bad. Awesome. Now listen, now listen, that's dope. I'm so glad you said that. Keep you got a little bit of my time. Listen, I'm so glad you said that. You know what he said? What'd you say? You said I'm a monster. You said I'm a monster, right? Now here's the thing. That same, that same mentality where you would say, yo, I'm a monster, I, I, I pop, I'll beat you down. I'm a monster, I smoke on you, I drink on you, I'm a monster. That's the same thing you can say, I'm a monster. I'm about to finish my next book by the end of the week. I'm a monster. I'm in the gym every morning. I'm a monster. All my kids is taken care of. I'm a monster because my mother finally appreciates me. I can walk in my mom's crib. Yo, you know, you know, you're gonna have all y'all gonna have that day. It's gonna be epiphany. When you get to walk in your mom's crib and she ain't worried about you taking nothing, she ain't worried about you doing nothing. Like she don't feel like you, you, she's not. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Her biggest thing is, are you gonna come over for Christmas? That's the life you want. That's that's gangster. That's real. I mean, excuse my language. That's real OG shit. I love that. I love the fact that when I go see my great grandmother, she could kiss me on the face and say, "Oh, my baby changed." You need that in your life. You need that, man. Them same people that you see in in, in the gutter, those dudes that be homeless and they stink, and you be like, "Yo, that'll never be me." It can be you. It can't be you because I've seen it happen to my own friends. Right now, right now you have something that is so precious and so valuable. It's youth. You can do anything right now. You can squander it. You, come on, come on, sis. You, please. You can squander it and waste it, or you can take your time and make something out of it. You understand? And the world is your oyster. I know kids that's, uh, that's making money off of selling Jordans, off of flipping Jordans every day. You know, so that the internet is yours. There's a bunch of little kids making money off it. I seen dudes crack jokes on the internet, and then a couple of weeks later, they on wilding out. They on TV. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So I want y'all to change how you define yourself, and I want you to have a confidence that is borderline insanity. I want you to find something you love that can change your life and I want you to pursue it with, with a tenacity that is, that, is, that is unbridled by anything else. And you have to find that thing, that thing that's in, that's in you. You know what I mean? Nobody else can give it to you, right? When you read and you study, you can walk in any room and people will respect you. I don't have a college degree. I haven't met anybody that thought I didn't have a college degree mm -hmm. because I'm self-taught. And uh, my knowledge and my love for being a scholar that's what saved me because you can't serve two masters and eventually I was gonna end up in jail or dead there's no way of getting around it so I want to be an entrepreneur I want to make money on my own I want to be my own boss now I just need to find something that's legal that I can sell myself that I can do myself now it's like oh I'm scared I'm not sure when you went and got that first pack and went on the corner and was selling that you were sure right so if you got a stack of your CDs in your hand 
why you can't be sure. If you got a, 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 a trunk full of shirts that you printed up, that's your idea, why you can't be sure? See, society has taught us to be slaves, to be workers. We're supposed to be bosses. We're supposed to be entrepreneurs. You understand what I'm saying? Believe in yourself. And at that point that you decide you want to make a change and you can discipline yourself to make a change, then you'll start to see the results that you want. But it's just like working out. You know, you don't see your results for like two months. So whatever you put your mind to, it's going to take a while for it to come to fruition. But you have to stick in there. Like the first time you smoked. Somebody say, you'll try it. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, my God. <laughs> I try again. Yeah, nobody and then after a while, you want to hold it in. You was a pro at it, right? You was a pro at it. The same way you say, "Hey, say, say, I'm a monster. I can take ten pills, drink a whole bunch of honey, and I'm still walking. I'm still fit. Okay, cool. Now flip it and do it on the other side. My addiction is success. If it was easy, then everybody be doing it. That's a fact. So when you are that one person that that that's willing to go the extra mile and do stuff that nobody else does. You know how great that is? That's what an Olympic champion is. Now, when you look at the people that you love the most, LeBron James, 2 Chains, whoever these people are, these are people that separated themselves from the pack and said, you know what? I'm going to do what you're not willing to do. Jada Kiss got a bar. He says, hard work beats talent if the talent don't work hard. You can sing. You can rap. You can play ball. But right now, there's a dude that gets up at 6 o'clock in the morning and walks everywhere with his basketball. That's who you're competing against. He don't want to smoke. He don't want to drink. All he want to do is train. Right now, there's a girl taking singing lessons. Right now, she's working out because she want to make sure she has the look. Right now, she's going to auditions. That's who you're competing with. You feel me? Right now, there's somebody in the institute right now doing a video. That's who you're competing with. So you have to be able to go that extra mile to separate you from the rest. Hard work and discipline. And it's not the work that's done when somebody's watching. It's the work that's done when nobody's watching that really defines who you are. I really have fun, you know what I mean, with y'all and stuff like that. Uh, I'd like to come back again and follow up with y'all. Right, it's a pleasure meeting y'all. Can I get a hand clap or something like that, man? No. <laughs> that just ends it right. Makes my video look good. Uh, clap for y'all too. You cut that.